Good evening, brothers and sisters. I was standing in a place about this big where over a hundred thousand souls were taken, were murdered. Luke 19, 41 through 44, we've heard it today in ICB version. Jesus came near Jerusalem. He saw the city and began to cry for it. Jesus said to Jerusalem, I wish you knew today what would bring you peace, but you cannot know it because it is hidden from you. A time is coming when your enemies will build a wall around you and will hold you in on all sides. They will destroy you and all your people. Not one stone of your building will be left on another. All this will happen because you did not know the time when God came to save you. Throughout scriptures, we see a lot of these cities, a lot of these people who push away God. And we see what happens to those places that say no to God. We see places of destruction, places of chaos, places of darkness. Ashland, PA. It's roughly 90 miles away from here. It's only 90 miles away. A poor town, lots of buildings falling apart. Looks like it's abandoned and forgotten. And I've never been there before, and it's 90 miles away. I believe there was a time for this town, a time when they said no to Jesus. Because they have allowed sin to come in. They allowed one man to go unpunished. One man conducted over 100,000 abortions. There was a pit in that building where he threw all of them in. I was standing on that spot where 100 thousand over a hundred thousand souls were taken where a little church decided to buy that land and it was actually given to them and they demoed that place and are now deciding to restore it and put a place of healing and restoration and where Jesus is going to be preached. And I have a video that will kind of explain it a little better. It's a short clip. Please watch it with us. I was in Maryland and I met a pastor, uh, Paul Eby. We got to be friends almost immediately. Right after that, I brought a team of five people, came up to Shemokin, and I met his sister, and his sister said, what are you doing here? And she said, what? nobody comes here. People don't come here. Growing up, this was a beautiful town. There was a lot of commerce here. Now, many jobs have been lost. We saw this devastation come, and as a pastor, um, it, it really it broke my heart because I, I love the coal region. And I, I love my hometown. I know what it was, and I know what God wants it to be. One day, uh, one of the guys here said to me, hey, Craig, have you heard of a place in Ashland where there's been a lot of abortions? So I went home and I began to research it, and I, I couldn't believe what I would read. Just a short distance from here, in the town of Ashland, 
was a uh, doctor, Dr. Spencer. And over the course of 50 years, he did tens of thousands of abortions in this small town of 8,000 people. So there were very, very wealthy people that had lots and lots of money and power. And then there was this huge uh, impoverished segment of culture that lived on literally nothing. When you come to Spencer's era in the 1920s and 30s, you're seeing the demise of mining and you're seeing a lot of poverty. And having another kid meant more mouths to feed and nowhere to work. Having someone come into town, and they came from all over the United States, that were portions in Ashland. People came from Europe to a little coal town that never had more than like 8,000, 9,000 people. They're all spending money there. And the whole community benefited from this. So it was something that everyone knew, but no one knew. When I heard about Dr. Spencer and all that happened there, it just broke my heart. Craig started sharing with me the fact that they wanted to have some people come and pray. We came here in April. We prayed uh, at the, uh, the house where Dr. Spencer's uh, uh, house was there on, uh, on Center Street in Ashland. When we were at Spencer's clinic, which was now abandoned, Pastor E.B. said, I believe God wants us to purchase this building. Over the course of the next five weeks, we're trying to find out who owned the building. Nobody could get anywhere with it. We went to realtors, nobody could come up with anything. One day we're meeting in St. Clair with some Christians and um, we decided to come home through Ashland and Craig Osborne had called me. I'm on the phone with him and he goes, wait a minute, there's a new for sale sign. We immediately called uh, the phone number and we were able to talk um, with the woman who owned the building. She said to me, what do you really want to do with the building? And I said, well, I said, I don't know if you know this or not, but there was tens of thousands of babies aborted in this building. I feel like the Lord is calling us to renovate this building and put a ministry in there that we would call the Mercy House. The Lord um, wants to minister to the women um, that have had abortions. And so that was a Friday afternoon Sunday night I was sitting in the sanctuary and my phone rang and it was the husband and he said um, I was talking to my wife and we love what you guys are thinking. What you're talking about is a, is a, a living memorial, perpetual memorial to the mercy of God and we, we, would, we would like to donate the building to you. From the time I was a child, when people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, the first thing that I said was I want to have 10 kids. 10 dogs and 10 horses. I never was able to have children. For me, children and life are so personal and so important. And I believe that this house, the Mercy House, it's for the women in this region to receive healing and to receive freedom and to receive deliverance We're going to need people to come in and help us, help us demo the property. And secondly, we want people to pray for us. We need as many people to intercede for this work as possible. And thirdly, we need is, is financial help. Um, I believe this thing's going to probably cost us upwards of 250000 It's not about judgment. It's not about pointing our finger at anyone. It's about healing. And it's about bringing mercy to, to people's lives. We believe that the school system will be transformed. There will be a transformation of families from brokenness and divorce, that God will change that and will bring people out of uh, both uh, financial poverty, out of spiritual poverty, out of relational poverty. I just think this whole region is gonna be transformed through this house becoming a place of mercy where it had once been a place of death and destruction. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has 
swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will your ground yield good crops for you. No matter how hard you work, from now on you will be homeless, wanderer on the earth. Genesis 4, 10 through 12. I believe these children will have their day in court. And looking at that town, I believe that the baby's blood, their cry was heard. There is hope. Thanks be to Jesus who restores and brings healing to the broken. Who puts on the heart of few to start praying and going out in faith. To see a town which is cursed and start to be revived by the power of Christ's blood. If we let Jesus into our cities, our towns, our neighborhoods, they will be transformed. And if we allow Jesus into our heart, we will be transformed. And we will have a purpose for our life. Let's cry out to the Lord for this town, Ashland, Pennsylvania. That there would be repentance and there would be restoration. Let's cry out to the Lord for State College so that there would never be a clinic here. That people may know that life starts in the womb. And I'd like to end by reading Psalm 139, 13 through 16. You made all the delicate inner parts of my womb, of my body, and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your work Worksmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in, in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day passed. Amen. Let's pray.